Hello everybody, welcome to this week's version of Full Force. We're going to be going over plus one plus one counters this time. So if you haven't been to Full Force before, what we do is we try and get a specific archetype and force it into the draft. So we're going to try and go in a specific direction. I'm thinking we're probably going to end up in green as a main color almost for sure. Uh, white and blue are kind of our wedge colors because of things like, well, uh, this card right here, Aetherborn Marauder. Aerial Responder holds... Uh, plus one plus one counters really well, so it's tempting to just grab aerial responder. We want modules also, but the modules we're really looking for are animation module and fabrication module. Decoction module is good, but it's not as on theme as something like Aetherborn Marauder. So I think that we take the Marauder here. A little bit sad that we're passing up on aerial, aerial responder, but I think think that it's a better choice if we're going to be going this direction. We're looking to get green though because not only are we looking for fabrication and animation modules but we're kind of looking for a lot of uncommons, one of them being Aetherborn Marauder. Green has Fairgrounds Trumpeter though and also it has the Armorcraft Judge and those are both two really good cards for this style of deck. Yikes. Well, I mean, this is full force. We are going to have to ignore the Cloud Blazer here. As sad as that might make me, because it just does not fit our theme at all. I mean, it's possible that we go black-white with counters and take Cloud Blazer, but I feel like it's just as likely or better to just take Unlicensed Disintegration, because we want to be green and be able to splash other colors. Other options are like Riparian Tiger. There's no specific plus one plus one counter card in this actual pick here. So I'm going to take the Disintegration and be okay with that. Not really sad about that. I mean, it's still, Unlicensed Disintegration is a great card, but uh, it could have been better. Now we have Snare Thopter and Pima Outrider. Two very good four drops. Uh, I'd say that Snare Thopter is probably better. That being said, this fits the counter theme, and there's a lot of things that we need that uh, rely on that. We want to get like... Um, like I said, I mean like Animation Module and Fairgrounds Trumpeter and all those kinds of things. Durable Handicraft is another good green card that really relies on, or helps us get counters. Um, so I want either Snare Thopter or Outrider. I could take Artisan, but at this point, especially with the Unlicensed Disintegration, it seems like I'll want to go green so I can splash the red, maybe be four color. And so I'm going to take the Pima Outrider here. This is where the, the force becomes real. We're, we're going to take the Outrider and try and cut off a little bit of green, force that color combination, and also get a little bit of Fabricate for our deck. And now, Sage of Shayla's Claim. Actually not bad. I don't mind the card. Uh, you end up with a little bit of energy a fair bit of the time in the counter decks because you want things like Thriving Rhino. And like I said, Fabrication Module is a big card. So it's not bad to take the Sage. There's also just not a lot of really good two drops. Other options are, say, Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knot. I could take that. There's nothing too exciting. I'll just take the Sage. Sage seems acceptable. Another Sage. There's also Molfus Squad, which does come in with a plus one plus one if I want. So I might take the Molfus. The issue there is that that is our third four drop and we're only five cards deep so 60 percent of our deck is four drops at this point that's a bit of an issue i think it's enough better than sage that i'll take it here it also goes with our theme boundary screecher prophetic prism and rush of vitality i think that i want the prism i really like foundry screecher but unlicensed disintegration is a powerful card we're also somewhat likely to want some white cards so, Prophetic Prism seems pretty important. We want to make sure that we get our mana fixed. Surprising to see a Prophetic Prism this late, actually. The card's just awesome. It goes in every deck. Alright, well, there's another 4-drop, which I don't need. There's also a Fragmentize, which, if I end up playing a little bit of white, Fragmentize is really good, so I'll just take it here. There's really nothing else that I'm missing out on. Larger Than Life is not a card that I care about. So, the, the Fragmentize seems fine. We have Mind Rot, Morbid, Eager Construct. I guess that it's Eager Construct. More two drops is fine. Herald of the Fair is bad, and I mean, it's no real reason for us to go into white. 
<laughs> just for a Herald of the Fair. The card's really terrible. Not had anything good come out of it. Wow, that is a stupid late decoction module. How did that get this far? I'm pretty sad about that, actually. We could have had a really cool, like, Cloud Blazer decoction module, aerial responder deck. Man, that is weird to see decoction module so late. I'm really happy to have it. This is a deck that doesn't have a great use for it yet, but we can certainly find things like Fabrication Module and start using it, or Thriving Rhinos. Any, any like, Thriving Rats and Rhinos and stuff become a lot better when we have a little bit of energy lying around. Same with, like, uh, Die Young. If we can get Die Youngs later, then they, they come a little bit better. I'll take the Live Fast there. I'm not excited about the card, but if we have a minor energy sub-theme, it certainly makes sense. Uh, just, none of these cards really matter. I'm actually going to take the Mountain. This is a League, so there's now no longer 8-4 uh, Qs as we know them. So that's what I used to do. Oh man, Magic keeps on resizing this window, sorry. Uh, there's no longer 8-4 Qs, and so I'm not going to necessarily be playing against the same people that I'm drafting with. So hate drafting becomes less and less important even than it was before. It's probably a better idea to just let my opponents know that, like, go into red or blue. I would like you to take these cards, because then we can just keep our way clear. Welding Sparks is awesome, but there's a Fairgrounds Trumpeter, and that's a card that I desperately need. Wisp Weaver Angel, also just a bomb. The card's really insane. Double White, probably not happening. I don't think I could play that. Welding Sparks would be a possibility. I could actually see splashing for that. But, I mean, Trumpeter is great, and we have reason to use it. Now we're looking for... Ooh, Thriving Rhino. I like Thriving Rhino a lot. Pricotta Pillarbug is really good in these style decks, too, because if we can get plus one, plus one counters put onto things, like, if we get a Durable Handicraft or a Fabrication Module or some Subtle Strikes, putting plus one, plus one counters on Pricotta Pillarbug uh, or any other thing with Lifelink is pretty important. It's really nice to have a big, nasty Lifelinker. And speaking of plus one, plus one counters, Lawless Broker does work for that theme. Some good blue cards, Glimmer of Genius, Gear Seeker Serpent. Dynavolt Tower is sweet, but I don't know that we have enough to actually use it. I have Decoction Module, I have the Sage, and I have an Unlicensed Disintegration. I don't think that we're going to end up with enough like Sorcerers and Instants and Energy to actually go on to Dynavolt. That would be a different Full Force video. I've done Dynable Tower decks, though, and they can be very strong. You can make a lot of energy in this format, so this is a real card. You have to have a very specific deck for it, but it can be very powerful. Uh, Sage? Could take the Aether Hub, just to have more fixing. Revoke Privileges is going a little bit late here. Good white and blue cards. This is not a good sign for us. It looks like we're getting cut off. I tried to force our colors pretty hard. Uh, hmm. The Aether Hub is interesting. I think that I just take that. I'm going to have a lot of energy just kind of lying around from the module. So I can use it to make sure that we get the red mana. Seems okay. I'm not excited about Sage right now. Narnum Cobra is fine. There's also Aptite for the Unnatural. I do need a artifact or enchantment removal spell at some point, so it's probably best to pick this up now and worry about another, like, Cobra later. I do like uh, favoring Cobra fairly highly because A, you need artifacts in almost every deck, and B, I mean, you don't get a lot of two drops. Like I said, I mean, right now we have a Sage and an Eager Construct. Eager Construct just obviously being much, much worse than Narnum Cobra. Um, we have Imperial Voyager, and not a lot else. I could take the Ornamental Courage, actually. This is a decent combat trick. It's not amazing, but it is acceptable. I'm not unhappy to play one. I don't think I can play an Imperial Voyager. We're also just not really that deck. I can't use energy for anything. Like, I have ways to get energy, but I have no way to sink energy into something. I don't have the Dynable Tower. I don't have like a bunch of Thriving Cards or a Whirler Virtuoso or anything like that. Like I have a th one Thriving Rhino as kind of our way to use energy currently. Everything else it just doesn't need it. Aether Hub maybe. 
Uh, Cal Prowler, sure. Nightmare could look out. Cog Workers. Not getting enough plus one plus one counter things. I'd love to get a Fretwork Colony uh, for this Fairgrounds Trumpeter. That's a kind of cool two card combo. A lot of the plus one plus one counter cards that we're talking about, though, as you'll notice, they're all uncommons. Like the Fretwork Colony, the Trumpeter, the Durable Handicraft, the Fabrication Module, Animation Modules are rare, uh, Armor Craft Judge. Like all those cards are just kind of awkward to find sometimes. So it does make this deck a little bit tougher to push, and you have to just kind of fall into it a bit. Uh, take the Workshop Assistant or the Aetherflux. Yeah, we could just go for that. I'll take Assistant. It really doesn't matter. None of these cards are that good. Wow. Nobody respects Dynavolt Tower. Maybe it's a possibility. And there's also an Aether Meltdown still? Yeesh. Yeah, no, apparently nobody has any respect for these cards. I might go with Dynavolt Tower. We'll see. It's not really in theme for this week's deck, but... At this point, I'm not getting a ton of the plus one plus one counters. I mean, I certainly have the theme. I have a Marauder. I have a Fairgrounds Trumpeter. Uh, I have the Thriving Rhino. So there's some stuff that I can do with it. No question. But I don't know. I mean, having an energy sub theme could be fine. We could go with the Dynavolt. Let's just open a Fabrication Module and be super happy. That's all I want. We've got a lot of energy now, so... Ooh, Syndicate Trafficker is pretty sick. Also, Hunt the Weak and Subtle Strike. But Syndicate Trafficker is just enough better than those. Glad that I picked up things like this Cogworkers Puzzle Knot, which I'm going to put back in. Because you want to have a lot of, like, incidental artifacts to sacrifice to this. If you have enough, this card's really unfair. It's very hard to deal with. As long as you have one mana up, it's basically just impossible to stop, and it just keeps gaining counters over and over and over and becoming a bigger and bigger problem for your opponent. Most of the time when you play this, it's like you attack once and they block with a 1-1, one, one, and then you, you lose an artifact and it's kind of ugh. And then turn 2, it's like, okay, well, now they probably take 4 damage. And then the turn after that, they try and kill it, and you make it a 5-3, and then you attack in, and it just, it just suddenly is this massive threat out of nowhere. It takes a few turns to start really going, but once it does, it's just super annoying. Welding Sparks, Depala. Ugh, I could really use a Welding Sparks. I like the Renegade Freighter too, though. And Renegade Freighter does work with things like Trafficker. I'm going to take the Freighter. I don't want to sacrifice Freighter, but I mean, I certainly can if I need to. Uh, there's Seed Sculptor, which is a great two drop. This card's been really really helpful it's it's been it's really outperformed what it looks like it'll do it looks very mediocre but man it, it's just been a house for me every time i've had it uh whirly virtuoso is off the menu unfortunately underhanded designs is reasonable i think that it's one of these three i'm not sure which one i want the most underhanded designs is great and i have a decent number of artifacts I might not be playing the Dynable Tower. Like, there's a very good chance that I don't. I think it might just be the Outrider. That or the uh, Sculptor or Outrider. It's so close. I think that I'd rather have a 2-drop. I'm going to take the Seed Sculptor. I just want something cheap. Underhanded Designs might be better, but it's also less in theme. I'm going to take the Seed Sculptor and try and make that work. Ooh, High Spire Artisan is an underappreciated card. It just stops a lot of flyers. I mean... Things like Sky Swirl Harrier are actually a major problem for our deck right now. We don't have any way to block flyers. We can kill it with like an unlicensed disintegration, but that's about it. And High Spire Artisan just stone cold stops it. There's a lot of three power flyers in the format that it just stops. Two or three power, like Peafowls, Windrake, Sky Swirl Harriers, a bunch of things like that. So High Spire is not bad at all. Uh, hmm... Hazardous Conditions has occasionally been a house for me. It's really more of a sideboard card, but against certain decks, Hazardous Conditions can be very strong. I also have the Ambitious Aetherborn, just to get more plus one plus ones. I think that with the way our curve is, I want another top end card, and I'm going to take the Aetherborn. This should wheel. There's not a lot of decks that want it, so I'm going to take this. Edgecrafters, Operative... 
Edgecrafters works with the theme. Operative is just kind of an awesome two drop. And by awesome, I mean kind of amazing. One of the, definitely the best black two drop, like that's at common or uncommon. Syndicate Trafficker probably edges it out on rare, but Dund Operative is really strong. I don't think I'll just take that. Restoration Gearsmith this late. Wow. Um, whew. I have Prophetic Prism and Aether Hub. And no other fixing. I really want I really want this Restoration Gearsmith. I can splash Unlicensed and Restoration Gearsmith. Is that reasonable? I have the Decoction module too, so that's just kind of dumb. If you can get enough mana, eventually that just is unbeatable. I, I gotta take Restoration Gearsmith and see if I can do it here. It's just too good. I'm amazed that it went that late. This card is insane. Um, none of these cards matter. I have a bunch of live fasts. I guess I'll just take a glass blowers or something. None of these matter. None of these matter. Hmm. Well, this is whoa. What is going on? How is Whirler Virtuoso still in this pack? That's insane. Somebody, I'm just gonna let somebody get rewarded. Let's let them have it. They, if somebody is in blue red, they deserve that. They deserve to have that Whirler Virtuoso. So this is a weird full force video because I mean, I feel like people just totally ignored the signals we were giving. I know that when you force things, it's likely that you end up in a color that somebody is just not willing to get off of. But I mean, to the extent that they're willing to pass Whirler Virtuosos that late, that's it's it's kind of crazy. I mean, what was that? Third from last? Whirl of Virtuoso is a first pickable card. That card's insane. There's a whole deck built around it with like Era of Innovations and I mean the Coction module. But yeah, I I'm stunned. That's crazy. Makes no sense to me how that went that far. Uh this deck, I'm pretty sure we're just cutting Dynavolt Tower, and it's kinda good as is. Not excited about the deck currently. Uh Huh. Well, that is possibly a bug. I'm really... Okay, I I want to know if I can actually save a version of this deck with double Dynavolt Tower in it. I don't want to... I'm not going to send it in as... I'm not going to play. I just want to see if I can save a deck. Well, I kind of want to click play with double Dynavolt and see what happens. I don't want to cheat. But at the same time, I want to know if, like, did we just find a bug that actually duplicates cards for you? If you're drawing a card into your sideboard as the time runs out, do you just straight duplicate it and get it for your actual deck? Because that's really busted. We need to report that if that's the case. I feel like it'll stop you. I feel like there's a check in place for that. I'm going to test it out here, though. I want to see. So... I mean, I guess we don't actually have to click when it says that we play our match. We'll just see if it even matches us with somebody. So let's just add lands and then see. Because we we don't really care. This isn't the actual deck right now. So sure, save. Okay, the deck is not legal in this format. So it's, it's realizing that we have too many Dynable Towers. Still very funny. <laughs> I mean... I was just wondering if it was like, is it possible that people could be like, you know, you've got a Noxious Gear Hulk, you pull it into the side and know, like know about this bug and be able to just cheat basically? Because that's crazy. Really creepy. All right, anyways. Um, we probably want one mountain, one plains. I'm just going to move the, the lands back out and we'll look at this again. So we've got, what is it going to say? Eight six one one. So it's exactly one more swamp, one more forest. So eight nine green sources, ten green sources with prophetic prism, eight for black, and three each for red and white. Yeah, that actually seems perfect. Magic did the right thing. 
I don't think our mana is that bad either. We do have only two double colored cards. So it's really not that bad to splash these. It's not amazing, but it's acceptable. Decoction module sadly didn't like do a whole lot for us, but it seems okay. I it's still a good card. Like just on its own, it's kind of nice. There's a lot of times where you can like attack in and just leave up four mana for decoction module. If there's a trick, then you just pull your creature back, play it again. We can get extra energy for the thriving cards that we have. We don't need a lot of energy, but a little bit here and there is okay. And it might scare our opponent too, because they've always got to wonder what you're going to do with all of it. Uh-oh. Wait, what? So now it actually won't let me say... Th oh, no. So even though the Dynavolt Towers are in the sideboard... Remove from sideboard. Nope, that doesn't work. Um... Huh. Can I hide it? And that shouldn't work. Interesting. Well, I'm going to have to restart magic, so give me one moment. Well, apparently restarting works. We added back in the lands. Eight forests, seven swamps, one and one. Everything's good. We save. We're ready to play. And I will see you for round one. Glintness Crane, and they hit Tynavolt Tower. Ooh. So apparently our opponent's got a spicy brew.